Hello, my name is Green, and welcome back to the Minecraft Build School series. Today we're going to be covering interiors. As you can see, I've got two different sized houses in front of me. The exterior is not important, what's important here is the two different sizes, one smaller and one larger. You may even recognise this house from a few previous videos now. It has no interior, it's completely empty on the inside because when we built this, all we cared about was making the exterior look nice. And that's often how my videos go and a lot of people ask, what about the interior? Well, today I'm going to go over how we utilize the space on the inside, and that's why we have two different sizes, because we approach them differently depending on how big they are. So, on this one, we've got what looks like a fairly medium-sized house. You wouldn't think it was too small, but on the inside, there's really not that much space to work with. So, the approach we take to a house like this is, utilize the space as much as possible. Yes, we want it to look good at the same time, but we want it to have as much as possible. So the first thing to do with any interior is clean up the inside to give you a workable space. So you might even notice that on the roof, you've got a lot of mess and the floor was grass before, so we replaced that. The main goal is to have a very clean room to work with. Often when we make exterior, there's loads of holes and stuff to deal with on the inside. So just flatten everything up and we can work from there. Because I've got a door here on the left hand side that's slightly above the floor, we're going to make a little platform to utilize the space for this house. Because it's so tall, we have to try and make sure that we go above and below the floor to make sure that we have enough space to put everything in. So creating this platform not only creates a bit of floor space above where our normal dark oak is, but we can also make a little basement where we can add a little kitchen in as well. The key to interior is visualizing how you're going to use the space. Now, really, really advanced builders have a interior in mind when they make the exterior, but I believe for the most part, most builders, including myself, only focus on the exterior and then go inside and then see what they've got to work with, which is exactly what happened with this build here. It was never made with the interior in mind. Both of these builds, we didn't have a second thought for it because most of the time, you can use the space to your advantage once you get cracking on the interior in general. So for example, we've got this very odd space here, and as you can see, I've put some cobblestone around it, and what I'm going to turn this into is a nice fireplace. Because it's such an odd shape with just four blocks that make a Tetris type of shape in there, it's not very useful. It can't have a staircase in there, it could perhaps have a ladder, but because it's got a window, it's kind of just odd. But what we can do is fit in a fireplace. Now, obviously, there's no use for a fireplace in Minecraft, really. It's just aesthetic, but it works really well here. So I think that's a quite a nice addition, especially with this whole rustic feel. You have to try and mimic the exterior to the interior and vice versa. If you end up having to knock in the walls and replace some blocks, it's very easy to patch it up from the outside, usually. If you can't, then usually the interior needs to suffer more than the exterior. So, now we're going to make a new platform up above here, again to try and utilize as much space as possible. In a build like this, there's really not a lot of space for staircases, especially to go pretty high you'll find it much, much easier just to use a ladder and a platform to make the most of a space in this style of house. Running a half block or a normal block around the skirting of your roof often just helps tie it in together and makes it seem less square. The purpose of this video is to kind of get you in the right mindset for how to deal with interior and how to try and visualize using the space rather than teaching you block for block because there's no way I could teach you how to tackle every interior block for block. It's just not possible. Every single house is unique on the exterior and it's going to be unique on the interior. Once you've got all of your platforms and all of your space ready, now we can start using all of our furniture tricks and tips. I've had 
at least three or four videos on how to make different types of furniture and different designs for various things, and I've even got a series on every single room imaginable in a Minecraft house. So, if you haven't learned any of those, those videos are the definite reference point, because if I went through every single furniture type, we'd be here for hours. So hopefully some of you already know some, maybe you already know some that I don't, which would be excellent. Use some of those in your house to impress your friends. In the basement here, I've just added a little kitchen, so that usually just includes some furnaces, some tables, and the rails, the detector rails, makes a pretty good looking hob. Of course, all aesthetic, none of this is useful. The interior that we're making is predominantly just for so looks. So now all we have to do is the final touches, including lighting up this build, placing the chests and all the storage and that kind of thing in here as well. So finding those little nooks and crannies to fit everything in is the key here. If you've got a blank wall that's not really doing anything, stick a shelf on there and add a chest or some other useful block for your house. Carpets make an excellent way to fill up a blank spot floor space, and again, shelves are an excellent way to store all of those useful things like enchanting tables and ender chests and that kind of thing. If you find that your walls are still looking a bit drab, then consider adding a couple of paintings and adding a couple of staircases in there as well to give it a bit of depth. But honestly, this is about as much as you can fit in in a tiny house like this. Apart from a couple of beds and some more paintings, there's really not a lot else that can be done here. This is more of trying to fill the space with as little as possible, but still make it look nice. It's very tough to do. You have a much harder time with a smaller build, and it's with the bigger builds that we're able to really go nuts on it. So this, was, this went pretty well, I think. We've really utilized all of the space. We've got several different platforms, and we've got some nice looking things in here. So let's move on to the large house, which not only presents a bit more of a challenge for us, but we can use it more creatively. So this is the house that you might recognize from a couple of other videos. And I think I'll use it in future as well because it's just a pretty nice example of a suburban house with a different palette to what perhaps is normal. It's got snow and cobblestone and that kind of thing. Now, as you can see, there has been no attention taken to the interior of this build when it was made. The first thing to do, much like the smaller build, is to clean it up inside. We need to fill in all of these gaps. Even if we're gonna change some stuff later, it just helps you to realize what space you're working with. And that will help us in turn visualize how we're going to deal with this very, very big space. Of course, we will need to hollow out this floor and replace it with something a bit better looking. And again, I'm going to use dark oak planks because I think they look pretty good and they contrast well with the walls. Of course, palette is your personal preference here. So we're getting to the point where things are looking clean, but it's the roof up here in particular that poses the biggest problem because there's so many different shapes. So you may even want to cut off entire parts of the build and just have something very fairly simple for your ceiling in here. And once you've got this space, we can finally start doing something with it. I'm using torches just to light up this place temporarily and we'll come up with some better light sources later on. Right, so now that we've kind of cleaned it up, we want to start highlighting certain parts of it and framing. Much like we framed the outside of a build, the interior is actually no different. So you'll see that I've got this very peculiar shape next to some windows and I've just used some acacia log to highlight it much like the outside. So that's a good tip for all of the odd spaces that you might come across inside your house. Some of them you might want to chop off and pretend like they're not there and some of them you might want to highlight. I guess it depends how weird they are. Now that we've done that, it's time to start doing the difficult bit, which is working out where your interior walls are going to fall. So I've got a garage here, so I thought a good place to start would be to highlight where this box shape would be. Now, because this is a more modern urban kind of house, I'm actually gonna make this very open plan, meaning it hasn't got many individual rooms. And because this is for one person, I'm only gonna have one bedroom as well. 
So making your interior walls is very similar to the exterior walls. You usually only make them one block thick. If they're two or even three, not only do you start getting a lot less space inside, it can be very difficult to work with. So I'm going to put my bedroom on top of where the garage is going to be. So I'm going to preemptively place some flooring in there. And now we have to kind of work out where we're going to be putting our staircase and how we're going to highlight where the rest of the walls are going to go. As you can see, we've only done one and we've only highlighted certain windows. So I think this place is a great area to make the staircase run up the wall, turn to the left and go back down. So I had to take out some of the wall, which is completely fine. Some things need to be moved or removed in order to create certain features. And a staircase in a large build is one of the dominant features of the house, particularly when you walk in. So that's something to bear in mind. If you're tackling a large house, where as soon as you go in, you don't want to have a tiny hallway. You want to be welcomed by a grand entrance with a large staircase. And that goes for modern, old style, the works. It's a very traditional thing to have your staircase very open when you walk in. So now we're going to create a larger platform where the other bits of the room is going to go. So I've kind of ended up splitting this house in two. And even though we finished framing a long time ago, there's no problem with adding stuff in later. You'll find that your framing never really ends. The more you add, the more framing that also needs to be added. So up here is where our living space is going to be for the bedrooms. So making sure we've just got a nice area to work with, we're going to seal off the rest of this garage with just, you know, the same pattern wall. We've got a bit on the floor and then some snow to finish off the rest of it. This area here is a pretty open space and it's got some windows here as well. So what I think we're gonna do is sector this off from the rest of the house and we're going to use this as the kitchen. Now obviously the interior that I'm making is not for Minecraft survival. This is for making a very nice interior. A survival interior and a aesthetic interior are very different things and indeed a survival interior will come along when I do my survival house guide where I will make sure that I go over how to utilize all the different rooms as best as possible. So as you can see, we're starting to make some progress here with our house and I'm still finding things to frame even though I tidied up the build as my very first step. So adding in all this framework is key to the build. Now we're poised with the question, how do we fill this very open space if we're not doing a survival house? Well, we did it on the other one, just slightly smaller. A big fireplace is a fantastic addition to any home. It's a very nice anchor piece to center your room around. So I'm going to be doing exactly that on this build. Now, if I had 1.12, I'd be using the new terracotta blocks and the new concrete blocks like no one ever has before. But unfortunately, my server is still in 1.11, so you'll have to put up with some cobblestone and snow. So I've just created a very simple fireplace that just has a chimney going all the way to the top. Now it's very bland, so I decided to add some staircases in there to create some sort of depth and detail and texture. It's a very nice centerpiece even if it is very simple. It's attached to the side so it's not dominating the room. The whole room itself will tie in nicely around it. So We've got a lot to do here. Now that we've sort of sected off where those two walls are going and we've got a platform for our bedroom, it's time to start adding in all of the different details of each room. So some obvious things that we can do is adding some paintings, adding some chairs, adding the kitchen and that kind of thing. And we're still using our torches to light this up, but it might be around the time to start changing what our light sources are going to be. You can put glowstone underneath your carpets in your main rooms to help light up the room in general and just placing some staircases in a nice formation around your carpet 
is another great way to sort of highlight and tie in a room together. Again, this video is not about how to make furniture, it's about how to think how to tackle your interior instead of just spamming it full of furniture. That is definitely not the answer. You need to think about where your walls are going to go, how tidy it looks inside, and what the space is doing. Those are the key things. I'm going to have a couple of sea lanterns hanging from some iron fences. Because this is a more modern build and it is very open plan, there's a lot of airspace up there. So by having those two bits of lighting that are just hanging there, it helps fill that space and makes it feel more at home. It also drags your eyes down because if you look up, your eyes will automatically follow that string all the way down to the sea lanterns and be forced downwards. So that's another very good tip. Adding staircases inside your flooring instead of just a carpet is another good way to detail a very empty looking floor. So a lot of the time, when you're detailing your house, you need to see, oh, that, that wall looks blank, that floor looks blank, and wonder how you can fix it. But all of this is nothing compared to utilizing the shape of the base and making sure your walls are all clean and nice. I can't stress that enough. So let's make the kitchen now. I've made a kitchen design video, so I'm going to make if I might say so myself, a very poor looking kitchen. I'm just going to add a bunch of cabinets and blocks and your standard furnace and nothing particularly special. I probably could have utilized this space a lot better. I'm using some item frames and some pressure plates to make them look like little cabinets that you can legitimately open up. Of course, they serve no functional purpose, as with a lot of this build. One thing I will point out is when you're making each of your rooms, you tend to put all of your furniture up against the walls and make sure that they fit inside the little nooks and crannies that you have. For example, I've made a little oven here with some cobblestone outlining and a little chimney, but that fits really nicely in this little crevice that I have on the side of the house. And utilizing these spaces are what's going to make your interior look really nice. So as you can see, I added some paintings, I added some more cabinets, a table, some chairs, but for the most part, it's open in the center, as with a lot of this build. Upstairs, we're going to be making the quick little bedroom that I talked about earlier. And again, this is a throwback to a lot of the furniture designs. Because the whole base now has been pretty planned out with how it's gone for, very, very simple, not too many rooms, it's just a case of trying to fill it in without it looking odd, and that's easier said than done sometimes. Often enough, you might create a bit of furniture that just stands out or makes it look odd. You've got to try and make your furniture not detract from the rest of the room, and that should help you tie everything in together. So I've added a four poster bed, but you won't see it from down below, and I've added a bunch of little bits of furniture, often just with doors and trap doors and some buttons will decorate it nicely and then some potted plants will tie it in nicely. I replaced all of the torches with a few sea lanterns on top of fences on the wall. It's a pretty nice way of lighting it up if you don't have enough natural light from your windows. Again, your exterior will determine where the windows are. So we're actually coming to the end of this build now. I've got a very open plan Perhaps I've got too many lights on this one. If you don't like open plan and you're wondering, oh, but what do I do? Literally, all I'm going to do now is fill it in with another wall instead of having it open air and we'll see the difference that it makes. We're just going to cover up this bedroom with exactly the same wall technique that we used earlier. And it has a different effect. You can see how much that's changed the shape of this house. The interior has been completely cut in half, yet it still has a really nice open feel to it. So there's a lot of different techniques that you can use to make the inside of your house look good and feel welcoming. And interior is much easier said than done in my opinion. I am legitimately no expert on it. I usually apply a lot of the exterior techniques to the interior mixed in with some furniture. 
but the key point is to do it in order. Don't go into your interior and start making tables and chairs. No, no, no. Clean it up on the inside and then start making some walls and then finish it off with furniture. Much like you would when you're building a real house. You don't go into an empty house and place in a table. But with smaller builds, you want to try and utilize the space a bit more, which means sacrificing some of the aesthetic pleasingness of it. I'm not even sure if that's a word, it's been a long video. And if you've made it this far, thank you very, very much. I hope that you've learned something about making interior. I know that a lot of people comment that they struggle with making interior, and hopefully this helps kind of settle your mind on the process from starting, tidying it up, making the walls, and then furnishing afterwards. If you're still stuck for furniture ideas, I legitimately have over 10 videos on different room designs and furniture designs. So thank you very, very much for watching everyone. I'm sorry that this was cut up so rapidly. That's because it was over an hour long and there's no way that I would be able to commentate for an hour long and it would be so dull to watch. So I appreciate it if you've made it to the end of this video and I genuinely hope that this has helped. If you have something that you'd like me to make build school on next, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching and goodbye.